been hearing about today. So welcome up, Anton Lundberg, Electrolux, Head of Market Driven Innovation. Hey! Hi, dude. Welcome up on stage. Thank uh, you. Here's, I'll just stand over here and hang for a while. Right. Okay, hi everyone. My name is Anton Lundberg. Uh, I work, um, or I'm heading up Market Driven Innovation at Electrolux. Um, I'm here because I have a question, and I posed that to Ola uh, some weeks back, and he smiled back and said, you probably want to come to SEMA, so we're here. Um, so I'll come back to that question, but first, just want to give you some, um, some context on Electrolux. Um, don't know how many of you outside of Sweden who knows about us. So um, Electrolux, we, uh, we're, we're an appliance brand. We uh, manufacture white goods and small appliances for the home, so uh, ovens, hobs, uh, refrigerators, washing machines, and stuff like that. Um, we've been around for 100 years, so um, um, obviously we've been working with innovation and invention for quite some time. Um, and we've done a lot of really good inventions over the year. We did uh, the first robotic vacuum cleaner some years back. Uh, we actually invented the first, what we call screen fridge, more than 10 years ago. So we, uh, we took a fridge and we put a big screen in the center of it and connected it to the internet. The problem then, this is 98, 99, is that the internet wasn't sophisticated enough to you know, really give any benefits. So that, that was the prototype and we still have it. Um, but we're good at uh, inventions. Right. We are a global company, so we're, um, we're selling appliances across 150 markets in the world. We last year sold four mil 40 million appliances, so we, are, we have a very strong presence out there. We are in people's homes. We are um, continuously uh, getting into people's homes, and if you look around in Sweden, you won't find a home without, uh, uh, that doesn't have an electric appliances. But our world is changing. Um, However good we are at inventions, it takes us a number of years because we have an industrialization process. Uh, and in our world, that process is hand in hand with our innovation process. And as we all know, the business environment today is different than 10, 50, 100 years ago. So we need to speed up. We need to increase our speed of innovations and we need to be faster. And we need to tap into the connected life of people. That's how we see it. So we realize that everyone is connected now. I was sitting in the back here earlier this morning and saw everyone looking at their iPhone or their pads or anything. So we need to tap into that. That was my question to Ola. Um, then the question is how? What, what can we do to get there? Because to your point of refrigerators, Appliances will get connected. That's going to happen. Our industry hasn't really figured out how yet, but it's going to happen. We know that. But until then, we need to understand how we can take our, the knowledge we have of cooking, cleaning, things that everyone is doing on an everyday basis, bring that into experiences that, consumers, that make consumers want to interact with us and open up for this, their connected lifestyle that we can be part of. So, from our point of view, it, the question is about how can we open up our business model thinking, how can we leverage the knowledge we have to connect to consumers? And, that's, and, I, and I think that's really quite interesting because now you might think, so, so an oven, what the hell is the oven going to do? But if we were standing here 15 years ago holding a mobile phone, then we would say, mobile being the center of your music consumption, your TV watching, your health apps, that would be equally inconceivable. So 10 years from now, we might have you know, uh, the, the kitchen that is teaching us what to eat to be healthy, or we can have whatever. We don't know. Maybe you do. So what I'll do is I'll invite up uh, another speaker. So please have a seat. Yep. Uh, and, and it's Sven Taulo, who is the CEO of Komoyo. And Komoyo is a really cool new cat in town because it's welcome up on stage. Have a seat. I'm always happy when people land when they're supposed to land and just get here in time. Thanks, you <laughs> made it. Uh, no, but Komoyo is, is, is the uh, innovations and entrepreneurs hub of Telenor. So they created a special company and just focused on some different areas and they throw in intrapreneurs and entrepreneurs and mix and then a lot of things come out from it. So uh, do you, you want to share a couple of words about Komoyo? Yeah, we're 100 crazy people right now. Uh, we're the company within the Telenor group, as you said. 
Telnor with 150 million subscribers around the world that are working on innovation, on new consumer services, made mainly internet-based services. You have 150 million 150 million subscribers around the world, yeah. So it's a fairly big company. So you're supposed to come up with new things that you can ship through the 150 million? Yeah, and that's really the issue that we started thinking about like three years ago. We started talking with Google, Facebook, the big companies and so on. They just told us, you know, you guys don't scale. And we say, don't scale, we have 150 million subscribers. Well, some of you guys out there are partnering with different telcos. And what is it? It's hell. Mm -hmm. You have to integrate to every single country mm -hmm. in all these different operations. So what do we got to do? Mm -hmm. Well, we built the global backend, which is where partners and our own services can connect to so we can access to all of these different subscribers around the world. But you That's decided do. to do it as a separate company, you know, separate jackets, separate uh, uh, location even? Yeah, no, well, location actually we are we actually placed uh, at the headquarters, but a part of that we're a separate company. And there's but, several... but is it because you're, you're sort of, you don't want to be attacked by the immunity system of a large telco or how's, how's, uh, why, does it, why do you create innovation hubs outside? It's quite important because if you want to do entrepreneurship, you have to be able to separate it away from the existing business. Mm -hmm. The problem is that if you are very highly connected to the existing business, you, you don't get the scale, you're stuck into the old business models, you have in prioritization over, over capital with the other operations that are really into deep cash flow oriented mm -hmm. operations. And that's why we're really shifting it away and letting govern and have the same other funding that, mm -hmm. than the other companies. How do you work with innovation in, in Electrolux? Well, um, we're, we're approaching it from many different ways. And I think for us, it's, uh, as I said, we're, we're a pretty big company, 52,000 um, employees. So on the one hand, we can sort of use their own, our own crowd mm -hmm. you know, uh, and really crowdsource ideas. And, uh, and we, we've, done, uh, we've, done, we've done those types of events where we open up and say, this is here is where we want to innovate. So, you know, get the crowd to work with us, which worked really, really well. Mm -hmm. And that's also a way to build the culture, to really get that people want to be part of innovation and want to drive innovation and want to participate and become entrepreneurs. Um, on the other hand, it's about, you know, looking outside, following, understanding consumers, understanding trends, and not necessarily follow exactly what consumers are telling us. So, and we talked about this previously, you know, the, Often you try to think in a direction or tangent, so to speak. So now there's screens everywhere. We should have screens and internet on our appliances. And might be right, but also might be something else that we should do. So we're trying to figure out how, what's the best analysis across the, the trends. But you're also increasingly sort of opening up and allowing others to co-innovate with you. Yeah, and uh, part of that why, why we're here, having the workshop tomorrow. So understanding that there are, as long as we know what we, what we want and what, where we're heading, mm. uh, opening up for the crowds internally but also externally to really get people to bring and be part of the development. Of so the you future. could be a channel into 40 million homes per year with new services. Could it conceivably be that you're sort of, you're buying the refrigerator and then you're at Electrolux App Store and you're like, I want to cook like Jamie Oliver, I want to <laughs> do these and these things, and then that sort of adds a service package. Yeah. And that, that's part of us rethinking in a way, saying that we have the platform outside in the world in people's homes. How can we leverage that platform based on what, what we can come up with and deliver, but also what the crowd can tell us and help us develop upon the existing platform. What, what, uh, what are the, the fields that you look upon as most interesting? The most interesting are the sectors. As right now, we are, uh, I think it's, uh, we're working into TV and film, and that's the only thing that people are seeing that we are doing right now. And Telenor is the largest distributor on TV in Nordics. We own Canal Digital, mm -hmm. so it's about time to disrupt ourselves. Okay. Uh, okay. So, so that's that's. And, and that's okay. You can go disrupt your other colleagues. We have to. It's not okay for every people inside a big corporation, but we have to. Yeah. We've done that before, and if you don't do it, you're going to die like Kodak. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So uh, th that's one sector we're working on. The other part is really how do we make sure that all the assets we have in a telco, for example, payment is given to third parties that can innovate based on that. Yeah. Uh, the first thing we did was really take in the global backend and connect Google. So we can, you can buy apps on Google Play, as you can do in Sweden now, buy on your mobile bill. Well, that's the first step. Mm -hmm. And what's next? We don't know. So let some other people invite on. And how do, you, how do you sort of, because the innovation process is such a difficult thing to be successful with. 
a lot of the times it takes a lot of time, costs a lot of money, and jack shit comes out three years later. <laughs> uh, and especially if you're large companies, in, in sort of telcos and industrial companies, they have so many processes that are streamlined to do other things than come up with completely different things. Mm -hmm. How do you, what are the sort of, the, if you would share some of the experience with other, because I know that there's a lot of leaders out here facing exactly the same challenges. What are some of the things that you've learned along the way? I think uh, one thing is that there are, uh, it's a good side of having good funding, and it's also a bad side of having good funding, because you're not getting that focused. So if you, have an, you are in a situation with a big corporation when you want to do entrepreneurship, mm -hmm. you have to focus utterly most on keeping focus on people and what they're going to deliver, mm -hmm. and not spreading out on all different new opportunities. Mm -hmm. And that's always a fight. Mm -hmm. uh, that's one part. Uh, the other part is that, uh, and I think everybody working with startups is really, things take longer time than you thought mm -hmm. it would. Mm -hmm. And every single thing that can go wrong, most likely will go wrong. Yeah, yeah. So, um, so just be contingent and focused on the different areas. And if but you have, like half, half, half the revenue is twice the cost, four times the time. I think that's the, the sort of the, yeah. the rule of thumb. And if you have many people, you have to you have to organize them as startups. That's what we do. Mm. So we have many startups within the company. Yeah, I, I really believe in what you're saying, and I think that's part of from our industry. We've been. You know, we have a culture where we look for the next big thing. Mm -hmm. So you start looking, then you look, and then you look, and then... And, and then comes the microwave oven. Exactly. That's, you know, then, so having, having an understanding that you need to have a lot of things going on, and then you understand and look and manage them to see what takes off. So then you fund and then you invest in that. So I think also not looking for that killer app, mm -hmm. all of its mm -hmm. appliances, but rather uh, work with the portfolio of things. But you could don't consider you see, it. Don't you see it? It's kind of another part which is quite hard is to kill your darlings, right? To kill the projects, kill yeah. them. That's really hard. And I think that's also what you find in, in large corporations that ideas live, right? Mm. Even if they're good or bad, but they, they, stick, they hang around. But in some cases, they are something we tried out 10 years ago might actually be the time to do it now. Yeah, so sure. then you might kill it for a while and then you re re revise it again. And what are some of the mistakes that you're, maybe you've done yourself or you've seen? Sort of innovation mistakes? I think from my point of view, I come from an insight background. So I started out consumer insight and business intelligence. And I think having uh, following consumers to, uh, to directly. So you ask and then you get an answer and that's what you do. And then you realize after a while that anyone that does that type of approach to consumers are doing exactly the same thing. Yeah, yeah. So rather taking a step back and say, that's really important to get that input, but on top of that, you need to put a huge layer of creativity, entrepreneurship, and drive and vision. So, But are you seeing yourself sort of investing in, in, in startup companies with cool ideas or partnering with them, or could you sort of play different different roles? I think, I mean, that's what we are trying to learn. Mm -hmm. um, what, what we know we need to do, we need to open up. We need to open up our business models in a way. We need to open up and utilize the strength we have. We're a global company with, mm -hmm. you know, if we come up with a cool product, we have 50 people around the world that's looking for factories that can manufacture them. Mm -hmm. So we have all those assets. So. You know, how do we leverage that by using the crowd or, or the external I think I think partners? this, just as a key takeaway, I think this discussion we're having right now, it's going to be a discussion that almost all industries will have. There will be a way of, very humbly, I mean, you're, you're, you sell 40 million things out, we really need to learn, we're opening up, but at the same time, when you find the right things, you can scale the hell out of that, both of your companies could, but as of now, it's been too difficult to to make these deals or to scale the things. Mm -hmm. so how, do you, how would you facilitate that? So when you call somebody in Bangladesh at the Telenor office, please do look at Bangladesh Telenor uh, uh, videos for Telenor in Bangladesh, really hilarious movies. So, but but the, 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 uh, you call the officer and say, hi, it's Sven, you, gotta, you really got to launch uh, WIMP here in, in Bangladesh. I, I think the, uh, for us it's fairly simple, not that big of a company, but so it's, uh, it's called Bjorn Isaksson, he's somewhere here, he can raise his hand. He's working with partners. He comes from Sweden and working in Bodler and now works with us. Or call me. We'll sit down, say, how is this, uh, what do you guys want to do? And then see if, if there's something we can do together. Mm -hmm. And then we also have like digital winners, which is the big award that we're going to yeah, have yeah. Uh, out tomorrow. And that's going to have, uh, we're, we're happy to support that. And, and tomorrow you, you're going to have uh, the winners. Yeah, that's, uh, that's good. Uh, and it's a lot of good uh, companies, especially from, from Sweden and Norway. Yeah. And a li little bit uh, lacking companies yet from Denmark. Do we have Finland. a slide on that? Pardon me? Do we have a slide on that? No. Uh, we have we'll, a slide. Yeah. We'll publish that on the web. Yeah. What, what are some of your, you can't say which your favorites are, no. but sort of which sectors are most interesting? 
I think that uh, there are two sectors really popping up now. Still, entertainment is very interesting, mm -hmm. and also payment is coming up quite a bit. There's a lot of things going on. I think uh, it's no, no, uh, there's no um, secret that iCephal was on uh, on our short list of five companies. Extremely interesting company and really, really, really disrupting uh, on on the payment side. So quite interesting. So. Um, Lots of, lots of good stuff coming up. But then really talking to us, we're screening with partners, we want to talk to you guys. If you want to work with us, then just give yeah, us what, a call. Yeah, what kind of things are you looking for? What's, what sort of, what would be the perfect match? I think that one of the most interesting parts for us now is Asia. We have over 100 million subscribers in Asia. Mm -hmm. These are markets where nothing of what has happened in the Nordics has happened the last 10 years. But it's starting now, and everybody's going to have a mobile phone, and everybody's going to be on mobile internet. Now 3G and 4G licenses are being sold. There are fantastic opportunities, but you have to think simple. You, know, you cannot only think about the latest streaming technology and so on and so on. There are so many low-having fruits. Mm -hmm. So if you feel like you're having an idea which is perfect for the Asian market, I mean, really run to us. We can help you out. <laughs> That's called really run to us. Run to yeah. cool. And what would the equivalent be in the, in the world of Electrolux? Well, I think um, one of the good part of being Electrolux is that we're in food and cooking, and you know, popular culture is driving that for us in a way. Um, so that's obviously something where we're, you know, we're going to continue and keep focused and, and um, try to bring innovations. Then every aspect of home life mm -hmm. is something. And I think, I mean, robotic vacuum cleaner has been at least mentioned three, four times. So uh, anything in that home life. Um, from, a, from another point of view, I think understanding how we can um, create or be part of the d digital relationship not necessarily waiting for new functionality in the oven, mm. but on top of that. Mm. Um, I think it's the areas that we, we need to figure out what to do more than we're doing. But it's cool because tomorrow at 4 o'clock, uh, we're going to have a culinary experience. We're going to drink champagne and we're just going to invent the kitchen of the future. So uh, please join the discussion if you have great ideas tomorrow and we'll see what we can come out of it. And, and it becomes very real because if there is a good idea there, it can actually be something that is shipped in 40 million projects conceivably, which makes it a little bit more, more, more tangible than just playing around on a whiteboard. Mm. Uh, any last comment you want to say to innovations directors like yourself or somebody running an innovation unit? Uh, uh, last, last wisdom that you can share. Uh, well, I think from what the, the learning journey we've had for, for quite some time now is really to, to, to understand that uh, business needs to go on and that needs to happen. But then, so instead of looking for the new killer app here, and in a way, what you said, detach yourself in a way and start looking at what seeds do you find that might relate to your business in parallel and, and work those two sort of platforms at the same time. I'd say, so, I'd say for, for people working with entrepreneurship, uh, it's really about be, be really very consistent of getting the frames around your activity within the big corporation to be able to succeed or you will be eaten up. Yeah, yeah, that's, yeah. One, that's one part. Uh, so the build other fences. Yeah, we have to be fences, fences and, and smart governance models and it's mm -hmm. quite advanced in a big corporation of 35 to 40,000 people to do that. And you have to put effort into doing it. The third part is that do not have a lot of people from the old company inside the new business. Because then you're just going to have, as we say in Norwegian, you're going to smell fjös. You're going to smell like the barn. <laughs> Key takeaway, you're going to yeah, smell So you fierce. have to get people on board from yeah. other industries, or else yeah. you're just, just going to go really down the yeah. same alley as you always did. Yeah. So um, another way to framing true. that is that uh, culture eats strategy for breakfast. Yeah. So thank you very much, gentlemen. Right. We're also going to have an innovations workshop with Symbio later on today. Uh, so if you want to join the discussion on innovation, you're very welcome to do so. Hmm? Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you.